yeah, it was so bad. This guy was in the drive-thru in Costa and... Hello everybody, welcome to the Aquarium, the Piscean presented podcast, and he got it right this time, take that. Well done. Is that your thing? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I'm Coach Rab and I will be chatting about goodness knows what tonight, and this is the lovely Libby who will also be chatting about goodness knows what. Uh, tonight's episode is all about going green. Mm. Like this green screen. <laughs> <laughs> Libby's a bit sleepy tonight, so Sorry, guys. Roll, so don't worry. Blah. I'll carry the podcast on my sturdy shoulders. Anytime we wake up. <laughs> Made like cold water to the face or something. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> this week we decided we thought, right, well go green and we're asking our audience, um, how far did he go? Because if everybody did their bit, they could make the world a little bit greener. Mm. And we're trying to establish how far everybody goes. So we did something that we don't normally do. Mm. We did a litter pick. We did. So we are going green today. We are. We're going to go and pick up some rubbish, guys. How, you, you saw there was a big pile somewhere, didn't you? Yeah. I didn't see anybody dumping it, but I did see there was a big Dirty pile scoundrels. of rubbish. It looked like to me... Workers, I think there's some tools there. <laughs> some tools dropped it. <laughs> Which I don't understand. Why? I'm... Why do people actually do that? Really? Well, it's just because if they have to throw it in the bin, if they've got worky vans, they'd have to pay a fee at the recycling centre, wouldn't they? So they just dumped it, probably. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, that makes sense because I yeah. would have to pay a fee as well, wouldn't I? Yeah, with your van. There's a um, McDonald's as well, about what two miles down, three miles. And what they yeah, do is people that, yeah. people buy their McDonald's and then they drive up this way oh, yeah, that's bad. on the old Roman road. And by the time they finish it, they just throw their McDonald's out the window. And they do it within hours. Remember you said that? You were driving home one time and it was within the hour. Because you were like, when I was driving past for... Yeah, because I'd gone up to yours in the morning. So it's in the morning we think that people dump. Scandals. So I think they're early people or either... So what are we going to commit to? At least trying... Have you got a black bag? Uh, no, I think it clubs. I love gloves. I love gloves, guys. The, the special gloves. Yeah. So we don't get hurt. I don't think we're going to need a bag. It looks like big. Is it? It looks like big bits. Big bits. Big bits. Okay, so we're going to pick up big bits and then. And then we can anti back our hands because we're. Very clean that way. Okay, mm -hmm. on we go. Dirty beggars. Not good. Somebody's bed. Look, lovely, beautiful woods. Gorgeous. Look at that. Mm. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And then junk. Oh. Not you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely here. Lovely, lovely junk. Not so much down there. <sighs> A leaf too. Somebody enjoying their heinies. Mm. Mm, smoking. The remains of a body. It smells good. It smells good. Did you get that? Did you get that? <laughs> oh my god, that stinks. Bones. There's bones everywhere. Skulls are my enemy. First little bag filled. This is it. Stinks, guys. Oh, we're gonna get this into the bin, but we'll go. We'll yeah. go pick up more. Do our bit. Yeah, and if we do pass anything, as well. Yeah. Right. We'll just pick it up. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll do our bit. It's our good deed. So our good deed was done. One big fat bag. One big fat bag. It was all non-recyclable, so it just had to go in the normal bin. Yeah, but. Oh. Again, if you're driving past or anything, or even if you're out and about, I would recommend that you pick up the yeah. rubbish if you can. Yeah, with well, that big stuff, we'd need to just report that, wouldn't we, to the council to pick up. You know, the big bed stuff that'd been abandoned. Yeah, I think you, yeah. Yeah. You I to, think so. 
And then I guess somebody comes and lifts it. I guess. Or I think it actually is the. Is it not the the bins that come on certain days anyway? They they drive around. The ones that've got the kind of cage in the back. Yeah, isn't it? yeah I'm sure they drive right. around and they pick up stuff that big things that people have dumped. Yeah. Because they do that at your house, I'm sure they. Cleaning up Scotland one day at a time. Yeah. One bag at a time. The other thing but, we could do if we want to go a little bit greener. Is we could start using disposable coffee mugs for all our yes. trips to the coffee shop. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So also, I'm sure you get money off. Do you? I think you get like 30p off your coffee if you bring your own mug. Does that mean that their little coffee, they charge you 30 pence for their... Dis- I think so, yeah. I'd be taking my mug everywhere. Yeah, I'm sure that's how... In Australia, they did that as well. Oh, wow. They were way more ahead, Australia. But yeah. in Australia, if you brought your mug, you were allowed money off your... And Nala does her bit for recycling or upcycling because I haven't bought her a ball since she was a puppy and she just finds them. Yeah, she also picks up rubbish. She does! That's right! I've got still got videos on my phone of that. She does. She also picks up rubbish. So a lot of the time, she, well, she not a lot bottles. of the time, but she picks up the plastic bottles. Yeah, we'll put that in there. Yeah, she's don't a you? Nala, did you get the bottle? She says, yeah, it's so dirty. Where's the bottle? Where is it? Where's the bottle? Where is it? <laughs> she says, I can see it's outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does pick up the rubbish. That's right, because when I'd be out running before, and then she puts it in my hand and I'd put it in the bin. So. Mm, and on the beach as well, I've noticed she She's does a that. beach cleaner. She's yeah. a beach cleaner. Yeah. So. so also as well, make sure your dog's green. <laughs> yeah. Although the litter was turned out to be a bit bigger. But we managed to find little bits of litter that we were able to pick up as well. Yeah, we kind of stopped inside the road, got a couple of bags and off we went and picking them up. And... Mm. But the bigger stuff, we'll need to phone for a special lift and let the council know for that stuff, right? Yeah, or they'll do that themselves, that's what we were saying, remember? Oh, like when they're travelling around? Yeah, there's like a special day that they do special, what's it? it's like a special lift day. A special lift I think it's a called, special day. I think it's called special lift day. And I think it's people leave their like sofas and that and the council come and pick them up from their house. There we go. There we go. Mm. So we did our bit and then we put out into our Instagram group handle above. By the way, a private group. Up here. Yeah, probably a little bit higher. A bit higher. Keep going, keep going. Keep... I'm just kidding. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, we put it into that group and we got some awesome feedback there. But mm. um, how green do you go, Libby? I go pretty green. Do you? I think I do. <laughs> I think I do. I try my hardest, although I do think I could go greener. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I recycle, I try and take off labels. I'm quite funny about wasting food, mm, aren't I? Me too. <laughs> Joey doesn't waste food. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you give it to Nala as well if you I don't do. eat it. I so do. it never really goes to waste. But. Mm. Um, recycling, yeah. Although recycling, I'm not too sure about anymore. In what way? I don't know if they recycle. No, I think they sort it all, and then they probably just. I I don't I don't know. I know I know exactly what you mean. There was I remember seeing a report about that that although you put the plastics in, they re- they definitely recycle the cardboard. I have heard that. Mm. It's the plastics I'm concerned about. But also as well, like nobody. I only found out recently. You know the oat milks we have. Mm-hmm. You know that is that cardboard or plastic? Well, you would think cardboard, but it'll have a plastic inner layer, does it? Not? It's plastic, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would know that then, but I, I counted that as cardboard. Ah, right. But you imagine if there's silly people like me that think that's cardboard. They're not silly. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, it's like the inside of a, a well, I'll say Coca Cola can actually has a plastic bag. Do you know that? No. And it's got a thin, thin layer. I remember watching one of these videos where they like they dissolve the aluminium. People say aluminium. Other people say aluminium. Aluminium. Whatever. Aluminium? Yeah, that's what they use called it. Aluminium. Oh. Um, but yeah, there's a very, very thin plastic layer to, to keep the coke from... Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I mean, the biggest thing that I've done in recent years is I stopped, where possible, using plastic bags. So when I go to mm. the supermarket, and we've, we've had that long tale about why I self-scan now and... 
Shame on you, Tesco. But anyway, um, I just self-scan, pay for it, but I just chuck it right back in the trolley. And then when I get to the car, I chuck it in the back of the car. Thinking the steps, I go to and from the house getting that stuff. Why are you smirking? <laughs> You're laughing at me. That's what I do. No, I have noticed that, that you've done that. I, I, You're I like, I've got the shopping. And then I'm like, there's going to be no bags here. Well, because... No, I, well, I, I understand. Go, I'd yeah. end up... And I was the worst packer. Like I would end up with like six bags with like... They were, I'd either overfill them, they'd split, or I'd mm -hmm. underfill them and end up with lots of bags. And it was just getting ridiculous. That was the one thing I said. I thought, no, I'll do my bit and I'll stop using But I know that you do get the canvas ones that you mm. can reuse, but I just kept forgetting to take them. And then, also, you have to buy a, a bag. So you're like, no, I'm not buying a bag. Yeah. That's what I'm a bit like. And when they're like, a bag for life, shite. A bag for life, shite. <laughs> it doesn't last. Yeah, bag for life. Yeah. Bag for life is like, they're just those thick bags you used to get from the spa. Do you remember the spa bags? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Spa yeah. bags you used to get. Those. Really? Well, the, they're like puny plastic ones. The thick, the thicker ones. Oh no! Because historically, the spa used to have good bags, but all the other shops used to have those crummy, thin, mm. break easy bags. So these bags for life they have, which are still plastic, um, they tend to be the thicker ones. M mm. and S, which you would think is quite interesting. M and S is a really expensive of uh, UK store, one of the most expensive, right? Yeah. M and S, and their bag, their they call them what? The bag for life. A bag for life, shite. Oh, yeah, boy. their bag for life is the one you saw. Remember the other day, the paper one. Oh. I'm yeah. like, that's not a bag for life. That's not going to last for life. That's not going to last I'm one like, shopping I don't even trip. think this is going to last to my to my van. Yeah. But yeah, paid, I think it was like 60p for that bag. Yeah, well, plastic bags, that's me doing my very small bit. Mm. Turning off lights, I'm quite good at Although, mm. I was raging the other month, so... Um, I think, oh, yeah. I, remember to, I was raging. So basically, um, I was sitting at my desk... And I heard something in the roof, and I thought, oh, well, this is an old farm cottage. Maybe there's, like, mice in the roof, which it was a pigeon or something had landed on the roof. But I thought, I'll go and check the loft anyway. And I lift up the loft hatch, and the light is on up there. I'm like, ah. Oh. So about two months earlier, mm. there had been a boiler inspection where the guy had gone up there, and he must have turned the light on and didn't turn it off, which means that light has been up there. I mean, I don't go up there for anything. I didn't know. He came back down, sealed it, and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, good to go. I didn't check. I didn't think to check. Because mm. to be fair, he did actually have a torch. He well, should have checked, really. But... Yeah. yeah. So that's been on for two months. So I was like, oh, rage. That's so annoying. That's... Burning a hole in the atmosphere. That is very annoying. Yeah. So that's my mm. bit. Plastic bags is probably the biggest bit I do. But, um... And food wastage, right? And food wastage, yeah. Um, have you got our our, Insta, our private Instagram, which is above, by the way? Have I what? Have you got the, what people commented on that one? And I'll get the Facebook ones. I can get that. Yep. We're always organised here. On on which one? Uh, no, no, the one above. You're right. You're right. Yeah, that one. Okay, right. Yeah, we've got them here. Mend broken wonky things after them, th after them throwing them out. So basically fixing things and upcycling. Mm. Getting shiny new replacements would rather save up and invest in long-lasting items rather than buy cheap stuff that only lasts for so long. So buy more expensive things for to last, basically. Yeah. Longer than actually. I've noticed that with clothes a lot. Yeah, what's that phrase? Buy cheap, buy twice. <laughs> yeah, because Primark, although to be fair, Primark is becoming a bit more premium, isn't it now? Premium Primark. It is. Mm. Um, always turn the lights off when I leave a room. Try to buy a little, little plastic wrapped food. Try to buy as little plastic wrapped food as I can. Mm, yeah, that's kind of hard to do, isn't it? It's really, really hard buying less plastic because yeah. um, everything here, our supermarkets are loaded in plastic. And then you could say, well, go to farmer's markets. But it's make, I mean, you do have to try and make the time. We know that. Make the time for these things. But when you mm -hmm. work and the markets don't always appear, sometimes it's once a month, you know, it's... Yeah, I don't think they've quite cracked down on that yet. No. Enough. Especially the um, plastic that is surrounding the, the vegetable and fruit area is quite bad. Yeah. Um, 
Because there's something nice about getting a paper bag and you get your vegetables into a paper bag. Mm. Well, have you seen the reusable bags in Tesco's now? What, the paper? A bag for life. Shite. Or the... No, they're like wool. Oh, like the kind of canvasy fabric. Yeah, have you not seen them? They're, no, where the, not. they're near the fruit section now. Mm. So you can pay for that bag and then they do have open fruit and veg now that you can use that. But I mean, it's in a corner. Like, no, like you've not even seen no, it. I haven't seen it. So it's not very well advertised or... It shows how often I go to the fruit and vegetable section. <laughs> well, when I'm in the fruit and vegetable, I go to the exact things I want. I want to pick up lemons, I want to pick up a salad, I want to pick up avocado. Like, I go exa a beeline mm. for what... I don't really browse that section. It's kind of controversial, though, the whole using less plastic, but also wasting less. W wasting less, because actually, sometimes, I think, I might be wrong here, but, like, the fruit that's pre-cut, that's in the plastic... I actually potentially think you'll waste that less than you would a whole pineapple. Because it's cut into... Because it's already cut, but you... So you can still recycle that plastic, but actually, are you wasting more by buying a whole pineapple? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't have a brown bin because you have to pay for brown bins in the UK. So... Is it more beneficial to actually buy the thing that you would probably eat the whole thing? Well, that's the whole thing. It's about buying... Well, you're it's planning your meals, isn't it? That mm. helps with waste. Now, I know the next comment, which is really, really good, was actually is buying things that are in season. And that's really mm. quite... Or, or only sticking to things that are in season. Because when you talk about the, the carbon footprint of certain products, like, you know, a client of mine who's very in, much into climate change, I was having a laugh because he said, what do you have for breakfast? And I said, well, I like a bit of eggs, but I like my avocado in there. And he, he used to rip into me because I had a, a hybrid car, so helping the environment with a... Um, solar panel charged car but then going home and eating an avocado that was shipped across from South America mm -hmm. it was like offsetting my carbon footprint so things like avocados to get them over here in the UK the carbon footprint between them being farmed and shipped across from wherever you know from South America or I think they can even throw them in Spain or, or Portugal I'm not sure exactly but it costs fuel to get them here and therefore their carbon footprint on the world for you to enjoy your avocado one and there's other mm. fruits and vegetables the same. Whereas if you, um, I'm assuming that they, they farm them around you, but buying things that are in season, then all of a sudden you're buying hopefully locally and then you're, there's less of a, yeah. uh, an imprint in the environment, if you like. Mm. Yeah, I picked avocados. Pick avocado. I did in Australia. That's what my girls do to me all the time. Mila hits me on the head and says avocado. avocado. I don't know what that's from though. So what we're going to do when we get in? Avocado. Is that what we're doing when we get in? Avocado, are we? Avocado. Ah, oh, I really hurt. Avocado, avocado, avocado. 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 <laughs> I don't know if it's in like a, sure. another YouTube channel or a kids thing they watch, but they, they literally scalp you on the head. It's avocado. Yeah, like, I've seen her too. But she catches you, and the thing is, she does it. And it's kind of, it's funny, not funny. I have you not asked her where it's from? I have, but she just pretends she made it up. But I don't think she did. Oh. I don't feel like she. She did. might have. Um, I bring a reusable insulated water bottle to my office and to my workouts oh well we were mentioning that when we did the routing about even like coffee cups as well and coffee cups yeah and i think you get money off your coffee if you bring your reusable cup we've never had that confirmed shall we ask uncle google yeah um, let's get uncle google up where is he? We'll just probably like... not through the cost of living crisis <laughs> i know can't give anything um, for free do you get money off your you reckon it Costa or Starbucks? Costa. Costa, if you bring a reusable cup. Let's find out. Every time you buy a barista made drink hot or cold in a reusable cup, we'll give you an extra bean. So they give you an extra bean, part of their loyalty. Which is a, a free drink. You look at your eyes and light up. She's like, I collect beans. And like, why don't I do this? I collect beans! Okay! <laughs> More beans! I'll bring my own cup now! I'll bring my own cup now! It's 
funny when we go to Costa, we fight over who pays. It's because we want the beans. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, I'll pay, trying to pretend he's being nice. Do you want him? Really, really a, you're just after the beans. I might be a dick sometime. Just slide my app in front, take the beans, but let you pay. That'd be harsh. Wouldn't? Well, they know me in there, so they they would let me. Oh. Well, the alarms would go off and they'd tell me to get over it. <laughs> Alright, so an extra bean, that's a way of... That's, that's a whole drink. Because a bean essentially is a... Yeah, oh, well, well yeah. it's equivalent of buying a drink, right? Mm. Well, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty good then. So yeah, you they're obviously trying to... Oh, no, you're right. Because it says non-members receive a 25 pence discount. I'll bring my own cap now. Mm. So if you're, on a, if you're a member, you can then um, scan and get a bean, which is quite worth it, or 25 pence off. There you go. I don't know why we don't do it. Well, we should do that. I remember in Australia they stopped doing that because of the, which is kind of ironic actually because it was right before COVID, it was the germs that were being spread by reusable cups. Oh, them taking so them in. And yeah, so them taking it in and then putting it, it was to do with the germs and that was before COVID. So COVID no. just happened. Before, uh, after I left as well. Is that right? So I wasn't know. even in, so it's kind of interesting that actually. Well, that'll be Did damned. they know? Did they know? Didn't tell us. Well, so they're quite okay with it now though. They're just like, yeah, spread the germs. Yeah, yeah, they must be. Yeah. 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 Spread the germs. Nobody wear a mask anymore. <laughs> so um, reusable uh, water bottles is a way to do it as well. I mean, the other thing as well is even if you use, so what did they call them, single use plastic bottles, what a lot mm. of people don't realise is the plastic actually starts to yeah. get into the water, and it's for example, you do not, you do not want to leave your <laughs> hot water, your bottle. You do not want to leave your bottle in a hot car because uh, the, the temperature from the sun beating through the window, if it heats up those single-use plastic bottles, you know your, your bottle of water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, when it heats that up, those plastics get into the water, which is why you probably shouldn't reuse them. Whereas a proper solid, mm. either metal or glass or uh, reusable one, you'd be okay with that. Well, I only found out recently, which I was speaking to you about, is hot water bottles are uh, have a use-by date. Yeah, because of the rubber in them. Because yeah. of the rubber, which is, yeah. That's not plastic. <laughs> no, not a bit plastic. No, no plastic, please. No pla. No pla. No pla. No pla. No pla. Um, once you can paraphrase. Um, I can't really see we'll quickly. You're better at skimming. Yeah. Well, um, something was saying they hate when people throw trash in the street. Now, that was one of the things we did with the litter pick, um, mm. which is frustrating because what we've mentioned in those videos, which we'll repeat ourselves here, but, um, you know, there's a McDonald's near us, right? So they buy their McDonald's, they're eating in the car, and they throw it out the window. And that's one thing that really annoys me because whenever so I go bad. to a petrol station or gas station, some you might call it, there are bins right there. So what I do is I store up rubbish in the inside part of my car, and then when, mm. I, get, when I go to fuel up, I just empty the stuff into the bin. I reckon it's a, yeah. I, I don't know, I don't even know what that is. Do you think a part I, of it is that people don't want to be seen with this bag in their car? They want the car to be pristine, so they just throw it out a window. No, I just think they're arseholes. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I think they're arseholes. I think they just, I think they're arseholes, whoever does that. Whoever, whoever does that, you're an arsehole. <laughs> I remember um, between clients, I used to park, go up to the park and ride just to kill time because up at the up near the Broxton roundabout, there's it's kind of like a hub for getting all round Perth. Mm -hmm. And I remember I used to be like, "What a bunch of ass wipes!" Like, yeah, there's a bin and yeah. there's all the rubbish around the bin. I remember thinking, "Why wouldn't they just put it in the bin?" The bin's like right there. But then actually, I realised. People were putting it in the bin and the seagulls were pulling it out. Ah. That's what they were doing. Because it was one day I was sitting there and I was watching and all the birds mm. came down and they were pulling the rubbish out of the bin. But mm. before that, I just wondered, like, why would somebody have the audacity to throw the rubbish in front of the bin? Mm. And I was getting on my high horse about it as well. Well, did I tell you about that time? In Costa, in the drive through yeah, This is a bit vague, but... Oh, oh, the person throwing the stuff out the window? Yeah. And you went all, like, She-Hulk on them. I went She-Hulk on him. <laughs> like, quite bit, quite major. <laughs> I actually got out of the car and I was like, can you pick up your rubbish, please? And uh, he laughed in my face. And then did you just go... Ah! 
I couldn't do much, <coughs> but I was raging. I but told him he was... your she-hulk. <sighs> <laughs> if you did that to them, they'd be like, yes, no. let's get some plastic on the go. Yeah. No, I'm no Hulk. Um, yeah, it was so bad. This guy was in the drive-thru in Costa and... <laughs> At the time, I was looking in my mirror and he just... In the drive through, through it just threw it out. There was literally just two people there, and the girls that were serving me, they were like, "Oh, he does that all the time." And I'm like, "Oh, it just infuriates me." I'm like, "Oh, like if I get to the window and I have rubbish, I actually ask the girls. I'm like, do you can I be really cheeky here and ask you to put this in the bin? Mm -hmm. Like, could you actually physically? Could you physically do that?" I, I would just feel, t I, I just wouldn't have the you audacity. Couldn't, you couldn't physically, I couldn't do that. No. I, I find it fascinating in a way. Like, well, I've just looked up. In the UK, the fine for littering can range from £75 to two and a half grand, depending on the circumstances. Yeah, because they, they police that now. <laughs> That's why, they, instead of policing drivers, they should be policing, you know, when they're trying to just get parking tickets or speeding tickets or whatever. They should be getting people that are dropping litter. Well, did you hear about the pizza place? This sounds like the beginning of a joke. The pizza place. Did you hear about the so pizza place? The, the pizza pe place? There the was pizza a, place? There was a pizza place that were noticing that their pizza boxes were being littered quite a lot right. on the streets. Okay. So what they did is they numbered oh. customers and numbered their pizza box. And actually, they were told this beforehand. They were like, "Your box is numbered. If your box is, if if this is littered, you know, we will contact somebody to." <laughs> Quite a good idea, isn't yeah. it? So actually, it was numbered, and their name was basically on that pizza box. So if it was found with that number, they would have. They are pizza time, eh? I think that's the future, because how else? They, they can't police. They just can't police people rubbishing, can't they? That's true. It's true, but what if, like, let's just say you went to put it in your bin, the wind blew out of your hand, you tried to chase it in the street and it was gone. You know, you've got, you've got to find it. Oh, you got to Or you're just going, bye, <laughs> see you later. No, you've got to find it. Oh, okay, okay. Unless you're in a blistering mm. weather. Um, going back to the bags, though, I was geeking out a little bit here, so I was trying to understand about carbon footprints. So a single-use plastic bags... Carbon footprint is about 1.58 kilograms of carbon um, equivalent in CO2, which is roughly the same as driving eight kilometers. Mm. So that bag, the impact that one little plastic bag has on the environment is the equivalent of driving, I'm going to assume in a petrol car, eight kilometers. Interesting. So now when I'm driving in my car <laughs> and not <laughs> using the plastic bags that would probably get about five bags from my shopping. Ah. I'm saving 40 kilometers. Mm. Mm. That's quite a good. What did you type in? Oh. I just carbon footprint on ah. plastic bags. I was uh, geeking out on it a little bit as I do. Mm. Mm -hmm. To be fair, they've made some changes, haven't they? Especially with the plastic straws because what is it it's like you should uh, look that up how carbon footprint of plastic straws no 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 how disintegrating of plastic how long it takes i think, I think it's, it's like it's thousands like a... of years isn't yeah. it yeah but every yeah. it'll come up with loads of items that will how tell you how long does plastic take to break down i think it's thousands of years 20 to a thousand plastic years. bags there you go yeah so plastic bags is 10 to 20 years to break down take away coffee cups 30 so the coffee that's <gasps> weird that's weird you would think a coffee cup would be quicker because it's more paper but apparently not oh so a plastic bottle 450 years plastic rings i'm going to assume like for curtain wheels i guess 400 years Disposable diapers, 500 years. 500 years. years. <laughs> it's just funny, the list. Coffee pods, okay, right. I can see years. that. They're thick bits of plastic, aren't they? Toothbrushes, 500 years. 500 years. That is mental. <laughs> That's mental. Single-use plastic utensils up to 1,000 years. That'll be like shaving shavers and razors and... 
Yeah, they're like kind of hard or plastic. Yeah. Aren't they? Interesting. Oh, isn't it? That's bad. It's quite scary. It kind of scares me a little bit. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, are we too far gone? Well, it's funny you say that because I remember during the lockdown, right, there was a three month period when China was in, was definitely in lockdown and all the industry stopped and the rest of the world was in a, on their form of lockdown and the world actually started to recover. So I was, mm. I remember that happened. There was things like rivers started to clean up quite quickly as well. And I remember thinking, wow, if you just give the world a chance, it can actually recover. So I geeked out on it. So I, um, as I do. Uh, but NASA was talking about the ozone layer. So the ozone layer, as you may know, is up above the earth and it actually protects us against um, the radiation from the sun, right? So it actually does serve a purpose. But some of these um, uh, sort of pollutants create ozone, which is nitrous oxide, I believe, uh, nitrogen oxides, and they're really, really harmful down at our level. They stop plants from doing their photosynthesis magic, they kill off, they ruin air quality, they're damaging to our health, especially to people with limp lungs like me. Um, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not great. So ozone stuff down here is not great, up there it is. And it said, um, so NASA had their, their thing that came out was, um, as the coronavirus pandemic slowed global com commerce to a crawl in 2020, emissions of nitrogen oxides, which is NOx, which create ozone, um, a danger to human health and to climate, decreased 15% wow. globally, with local reductions as high as 50%, according to a study led by the scientists at NASA's, right? As a result of the lower NOx emissions, by June, so remember the kind of lockdowns were from March, March, yeah, 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 yeah. by June, um, global ozone levels have dropped to a level that policymakers thought it would take at least 15 years to reach. Amazing. Wow. So ozone down here is bad, ozone up there is good, but when they cut out all these, um, all the emissions, in the space of, well, by June, so what, was it middle or late March? Or well, the whole April, May, oh yeah, so just over a three month period, it recovered what they predicted would take 15 years. Wow. I mean, that's just amazing. It just shows you how much. Yeah. Like, we talk about carbon footprints and lots of things, but ultimately it's our fossil fuel emissions are clearly yeah. doing, making the most damage. Yeah. Just shows you, yeah. If we, if we could all really go for it and try, mm -hmm. you would be able to save the planet. Yeah, if everybody did their bit. If everybody did their bit. That's what David Ambrose... Yeah, he's, 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 he's... His documentaries recently have been a lot more about that, haven't they? Yeah, because I think he knows he's in his twilight years now. And he's yeah. wanting to leave behind a legacy that the planet will hopefully be saved. So he's trying to... He's I understand trying. what he's doing. Oh, bless him. I love David Ambrose. Yeah. I mean, for a while there, they were looking to kind of electric cars. And I remember when that first mm. came out, I was like, that's a hiding to nothing. Because if the battery materials could be sourced economically, fine. But to mine for all the lithium and goodness knows what else they put into these batteries, it's really expensive. And then what started to happen, which I kind of predicted anyway, was that when they first came out, everybody thought they were wholesome. They're getting electric cars. Now, unless you had your own source of environmentally friendly power production, mm -hmm. solar panels, wind or a hydro or something, then you were just using the fossil fuels at the local power plant coming through your home to charge your car in the driveway. Yeah. It was just trading one for the other. And then what's happening is, and this is why the, the, the industry for it is falling through, is because the second-hand market for, for fully electric, um, nobody wants a second-hand electric nobody car. Nobody wants it, no. Yeah, because the, the so batteries... So what are they going to do with all the, those batteries? Yeah. They're going to put them in the ground, aren't yeah, they? Or the, the thing is, like the batteries, some of them will, because the battery is the most expensive part of a full electric car. And any sort of fault with it, the car's done. Mm -hmm. So then the second hand market, so what happened was people were buying cars and you know, sometimes people keep cars for three or four years, they trade them back in, mm -hmm. which was fine. They were trading them back in, they were getting a new one. But then you, me or Joe Bloggs have been looking for maybe a second hand car, but uh, I'm not sure about a second hand battery and they just weren't buying them. No, but you wouldn't. No. Oh. No, you just wouldn't want to risk it, especially that if it goes, your car's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's, they've not been around long enough to know, well, how long does a battery in these cars last? There's not been enough research, I don't think, on the electric cars yet. No. Well, I know that Porsche, they always just went down the hybrid route. They were like, 
they're, they're not best. They, they tried the full electric, but they thought, no, they're going down the hybrid. Mm. And some of the other car making companies are going down that route. But they reckon hydrogen engines will be the future. Um, if right. they can just make them What's safer. the difference then? Well, hydrogen uses hydrogen atoms or basically, you used to get hydrogen balloons. It's very explosive, mm -hmm. but the hydrogen itself is much cleaner. But it's just very, very flammable. Yeah. Um, they used How to, is that going to be in a car then? Well, that's where they have to make it safer. But if they could make the... Because hydrogen engines are usually quite large. That's the thing. That's my understanding of it. It's quite... Mm -hmm. That's the problem. So if they can shrink it down and keep them safe... Because what was it? It was the Hindenburg disaster, which was terrible, I think. Back in the day, they used to have these big hydrogen balloons. Mm -hmm. and because hydrogen is um, let, not as dense as air. So then right. they, these balloons would then rise and they used to take, like the equivalent of a plane, they would have like a bus of people get on and the balloon would lift them. Mm -hmm. But it's so flammable, there was a terrible, terrible, tragic accident where it just explodes. So if they could make them safer, then that would probably be the, the future because um, it's a cleaner energy source. Right. Um, and it's easier to produce as well. A lot more people are working from home now though as well, aren't they? Yeah. Since COVID. Yeah. I reckon they, after COVID they realised hmm, we don't need to spend so much money on the office here. Yeah. And the electricity, let them pay for their own electricity. Yeah. And working from home does save on traffic. And it saves on traffic. Does Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And then other companies have schemes where they, um, you know, they encourage bikes or car shares or things like that, right? Yeah. But if we all did our bit, we could make change. That's also as well, small bits, small pits, small pits, <laughs> small pits mm -hmm. do make a difference. Like I used to, I hear so many people be like, oh, well, what's one can going to do? Get me pretty smashed. <laughs> What's one can can gonna do if I recycle it? I'm like, yeah, but if everybody has that attitude, then if everybody recycled that one can, yeah, then it would make a difference. It's just it's, it's all things. It's just it's not throwing them away. It's at least putting it in places because, like, mm. when you go, you might hear these like lovely holiday islands, right? And I have got clients that go to the Maldives a lot, and the Maldives I've never been, but apparently they're gorgeous, they're like romantic place to go. Um, but every morning they've got a staff that have to go out and clear the beaches of all the bottles mm. that wash up each day. And uh, my client got up early one day and he went down really early and they were, they were very much trying to keep him off the beach. Not that they couldn't stop him. Mm. But like, oh, sir, can we get you something? Can we take Because they didn't want him to see it. Right. And he's, he, he could see, and they, he reckoned they'd already been at it a good half an hour. And even then there was hundreds of bottles. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Just every day washes up, washes yeah. up. Yeah. Really. The ocean. Yeah, I, when I travelled through Southeast Asia, it was bad. Yeah. It was so bad. The the plastic there in the water. And also as well, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia was... It, there's nothing. No. No. There was like a tiny, tiny section of the Great Barrier Reef. But they were saying that that was normal. They were claiming that that was normal, that it does die eventually and it will regrow. But I was a bit like, hmm, it's bleached. It's bleached. The sea, the ocean is bleaching. That's my opinion. I thought that. Do you know who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Cheese pants. <laughs> I learned that last week. <laughs> How have we got such a shadow this week? How's that happened? A shadow? That's your shadow. <laughs> yeah, how's that? <laughs> Are you actually talking about your shadow? Yeah. Right? It looks like we've got an extra person. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's mine and your shadow. Uh, it, oh, let's get together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what, what's our shadows up to? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Emotion in the ocean. Yeah. Have both our heads are big. <laughs> Mine's, look at the size of this head. Like, Jesus. You don't have it's physically and egotistically you've large. You've got a lovely shaped head. Oh, yeah, yeah. Head. You don't want to what you call it? You call you, you've got a nice chiselled jaw. A chiselled jaw? Yeah. <laughs> Look at you smirking. Yeah, he's got a chiselled jaw. You do, you have a lovely jaw. I've got a giant head. 
<laughs> but it weighs more than me. <laughs> What's a normal head like? Twenty pounds. Or what, how much is it, the average head? Is oh it my pounds? god! Should we weigh your head? <laughs> <We're tiny. laughs> what is the average weight of a head? head? Um, the average human eleven. head. Eleven. No. Eleven pounds is the average. This bad boy is like. That's no. not even my whole weight. What? what? You mean your whole weight? Eleven pounds. Is your whole? What? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. She's Sorry. tired, people. Sorry. She's tired. She's she's had a long day. I'm like, oh my god, your head weighs the same. <laughs> it's you. It's like, man, your ego is huge, Rob. <laughs> my dad, yeah. that's impressive. But that's the average. That's a brain. Yeah, that's the average. But I don't have. Do you know your brain uses twenty percent of your body's entire energy? Mm. But the size of your brain does not equal intelligence. Just want to clear that right up. So my giant head doesn't necessarily make me intelligent. I wish it was. It would explain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think my ego just explained the rest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get 11 pounds. Here we are. Wow. Okay. We should weigh your head. Like actually weigh each other's heads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do we do that though? <laughs> <laughs> well, you just put your head, you'd have to relax. Just put your head <clears> on <throat> the scales. Do you think that would work? Yeah, why wouldn't it? You just no. lie back, as in you're lying down, and instead of like, like you would on a pillow, put your, rest your head, but on mm -hmm. the scales. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that might work. Yeah, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll try and win. <laughs> Let's weigh our heads, that'll be funny. I bet mine will be heavier. <laughs> that means you're denser, darling. <laughs> Do you remember that it used to be like a bar, wasn't it's it? Just like, full of rubbish. You're so dense. You you're so that? dense, no? No, that used to be a thing when people were oh, calling really? somebody dense was calling them stupid, basically. Oh right, okay. Yeah, Not was... thick or anything. That was what well, we like thick, to... dense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would just say thick. Well, we took it once further, and we were like, "You're dense. You're you're dense. You're dense. You're dense." <laughs> No, thick. I don't like that word though. It's you know? quite mean. Thick. Depends what you're using it to describe though. We always <laughs> end in the gutter. Let's get back to. Oh no! Rab. Whoa. Shields. Whoa. Hmm. Now, we mm. actually did get back into our fitness a bit this week. Now, next yeah, we week is going to be the episode all about getting back into it. Yes. We're doing well. We are. We're yeah. doing really well. Mm hmm. Although I may have eaten a bit of buttercream today. <laughs> yeah, what is buttercream? Just I actually a, a spoonful or two. Oh, you said it's for making cookies, isn't it? Uh, yeah. It's, it's, you, know, you should mm, try a little bit. Mm. Oh, how much did you try? I had three spoonfuls. <gasps> three spoonfuls? I'm not saying how big the spoonfuls were. I we had some time fastics before we started. They're fantastic. Yeah. What, they fantastics or time fastics? Tan fast. Tan fastics. They're like these sugary sweeties tan to give us some perked up energy before the podcast. Yeah, but no, we are. We have been doing really well. We've been drinking a lot of water. We've been going to bed so early. Yeah, we have been. That has made a difference as well. Yeah. Yeah. And do more exercise and getting back running and definitely makes a difference. It's tough getting back into the run. Well, it's tough running anyway, but it's with the, the shorter days. You know, you've got mm. you've got your working day, and then you're like, right, you want to try and get out for a run, but then it's dark. Yeah, but it's good because then it makes you, you then make the most out of the light more. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're like, we need to get out quickly, yeah. make most of the light while we've got it. Well, we still can. But it is very wet and cold. But it is very wet and cold, so it is it is much harder. It's hard. <laughs> Isn't that this time of year to come on? You said wet and harder, and about a minute later, you were saying thick as well. Come on, and bed. You said bed. My mum's watching. These are trigger words for a child like me. Right. Trigger words, Libby. Oh no! Use that big. Use that big. You said big. She said big. <laughs> It's very hard for me to stay mature. Yes, so it's very cold and wet. But yeah, we're doing well. If 
you done any weight training today? Uh, no, but I did my Pilates. Oh. I didn't. What, have you done any weight training today? Yeah. You liar! I've blown balloons. Blown balloons. She said blown! See? How on earth am I supposed to be a mature adult? I blew Your mind is in the gutter. All... <laughs> Your mind is in the gutter. You dragged me into the gutter. I was um, exercising my, my throat. With the balloons! I was blowing balloons, guys. You make it very difficult. But actually, no, I haven't done any weight training today. No. No, because the weights are here, so... No, yeah, I've given you my big fat kettlebells. You oh, yeah, that's, that's, lifted them. that's very true, actually. Yeah, I haven't said you have the kettlebells. Well, I did two hours of walking, so... No. <laughs> <laughs> so... You could have done them as walking lunges. There we are. Imagine, imagine uh, people seeing me do that. With like all the dogs, they'd be like... Uh, they'd be like, there's a Ministry of Funny Walks. That was on, um, oh, that was on uh, Monty Python, I think. Let me just double check that. Uh, Ministry of... Oh, come on, Ravi boy, you can't uh, Ministry of Funny Walks. John Cleese was definitely... I don't know if it was on Monty Python. Well, anyway. Ministry of Funny Walks, that's what you'd look like if you were... Oh, okay. I've seen that. I don't know, I'm particularly click that, but I'd have to mute this. So it doesn't... Is it going to load it? Why is it on Facebook? Oh, because it's a link on Facebook. May I see your silly walk? Is this you? Yep, that's you. Oh, <laughs> that would be you. that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. That's hard, that. Yeah, I don't know how he does that. <laughs> He's so straight, but his yeah. posture is good, isn't it? His legs are. He's quite flexible, isn't yeah. he? I bet he did some stretching before that. Probably. There mm. we are. There we are. Sure so. so, yeah, so the next episode's going to be all about getting fit or getting back yes. to fitness. Yes, getting so back to fitness. We'll share some bits and pieces on that, mm -hmm. some tips. You'll see some stuff on our stories as well. If you join If our you join Instagram, Instagram yeah. bit higher. It's me that's editing it. I can put it wherever I want. I can put it right here if I want. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was going to be your finger. Or did I? <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case. Yeah. Uh, right, any other bits before we sign off? So going green, we talked about the basic thing we do, other people do their equivalent. If you do any sort of solar panels, mm -hmm. um, looking after... Reusable stuff seems to be the thing, isn't it? Avoiding yeah. single-use stuff, that seems to help. And making sure you don't add to the litter and whatnot when you're going by, throwing stuff out. Um, what else do we kind of cover tonight? Uh, the reusable water, uh, cups. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, if, oh, coffee places that allows you to take your coffee mug or water bottles. Yeah, mending broken wonky things rather than throwing them out. So the upcycling stuff, yeah. Upcycling. That's it, I think. Yeah. Somebody here has said, we've lined the roof with solar panels, giving us almost 11 kkw sunny days. Kilowatts. There we are. Kkw. Thousand kilowatts. <laughs> There you are, make your own energy. You said you'd love to get solar panels. Yeah. You said that yesterday, didn't you? Well, it's the new ones. You just need light, or light rather than sunlight. You can, the new ones, what they call voltaic panels are quite fancy. Infrared, I believe. Yeah, it kind of feels good knowing that it's in the sunshine. Sunshine in the no, field time. Yeah, I agree. I think there's something quite satisfying about that. Yeah, because that's somebody that's got an electric vehicle that charges it actually from the panels. Yeah, when I it's love like that. that, fine. But when you're charging it using fossil fuels, yeah. that's the point. I, I like that. I would like to do that. There was uh, something I saw online. I'll try and find it again when I do the edit. And it was an uh, electric bus that had a vehicle following it that stopped to use a generator to charge it again. <laughs> you know, like a petrol fuel generator or diesel fuel mm. generator charging the bus <laughs> yeah <laughs> ah some people, some people you, just, you just tell them Rob. i will you tell them you put the world to right well you put the world to right yeah mm. Posture. Posture. right everybody do not forget to like comment and subscribe if you haven't done so ring the notification bell
See you on the next episode. See ya.